It's Spurgeon. <laughs> you ever get worn out? You ever get tired? You ever get burned out? <laughs> you ever come to the place where you think, man, I just want to go home. God, take me home. Or do you sometimes think, if only I were over there. If only I were over there. If only... You ever get tired? Jesus did. You know what he did? He rested. <laughs> oh well. Sometimes I think people get too carried away about what they do every day that they think it has to be a certain way. And that when you do, you forget that sometimes the easiest answer might be God's answer. When you get tired, rest. When you get hungry, eat. When you get thirsty, drink. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? It's a little harder sometimes when you have a personal relationship because sometimes that personal relationship that you have with a person might want or need something from you that you aren't giving to them. Like when you're married, you could say you're married and never spend any time with that person that you're married to. It would still be a marriage. It would still be married, but it wouldn't be much of a relationship, wouldn't it? Be kind of a bummer. <laughs> And then again, some people may say, sounds like perfection to me. <laughs> but the reality of a relationship with God, too, is one that He may want something from you instead of you wanting something from Him. Sometimes He just wants you to admit to Him, you're tired. And He just wants to spend time with you. Or you're lonely, and He just wants to comfort you. Or you're hurt. And he just wants to care for you. Because when you know that God is love, then you know that love wants to express itself. And because God wants to express himself to you personally, sometimes when you are the weakest, it's the best time to go to him. And find his intimacy is always going to satisfy you. Because he loves you. In Spurgeon, Christ, who is our life, from Colossians. Paul's marvelously rich expression indicates that Jesus is the source of our life. You has he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. That same voice which brought Lazarus out of the tomb raised us to newness of life. He is now the substance or the very food of our spiritual life. It is by his life that we live. He is in us, the hope of glory, the spring of our actions, the central thought which moves every other thought. Jesus is the sustenance of our life. He is our food of life, spiritual life. What can the Christian feed upon but Jesus' flesh and blood? This is the bread which comes down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. O oh, wayworn pilgrims in this wilderness of sin, you never get a morsel to satisfy the hunger of your spirits, except if you find it in him. Jesus is the comfort of our life. All our true joys come from him, and in times of trouble his presence is our very consolation. He is our comfort. There is nothing worth living for but for him. And his loving kindness is better than life. Jesus is the object of our life. As speeds the ship toward the port, so hastens the believer towards the haven of his Savior's bosom. Is it not into Jesus' lap that you would find yourself one day, that you would be content to just lean on his brow and to hear him say, I love you? Often you have worshipped in the same way to say to him those words of love you have today. But would it not be also something you would like to hear him say? I love you. 
As flies the arrow to its goal, so flies the Christian towards the perfecting of his fellowship with Christ Jesus, with being made more aware as he cares for you. As the soldier fights for his captain and is crowned in his captain's victory, so the believer contends for Jesus himself and gets his triumph out of the triumphs of his master. For him to live is Christ. Jesus is the example of our life. When there is the same life within us, there will and there must be of a great extent the same developments without our life. And if we live in near fellowship with the Lord Jesus, we shall grow like him. So to be like him, we need to be near him. As we are near him, we will be like him. We shall set him before us as our divine copy and become exactly into his image. And we shall seek to tread in his footsteps until he shall become the crown of our life in glory. Oh, how safe, how honored, how happy is a Christian since Jesus is our life. When you're weary, when you're burdened, when you're tired, when you need to rest, Jesus said, come unto me.